You're here, I'm queer, and welcome back to my channel. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. For this video, I am here yet again to serve you some nostalgic magic. I will be making the iconic Cynthia doll from Rugrats. Growing up, I was obsessed with Rugrats, especially Angelica. I loved her. I imagined I was her. Um, I think I was also kind of jealous of her because she was just like walking around with a doll in her hand. She, like she just had Cynthia wherever she goes and I was really, really jealous of that. However, I did feel bad for Cynthia because you never really see her in her brand new form. At least I didn't. Obviously, I'm sure I haven't watched every single Rugrats episode or movie. I didn't. Um, but I remember being sad. I'm like, oh my god, are they not going to show Cynthia in her pre-Angelica form? Like, I want to see her looking brand new and not broken. <laughs> and that's why I want to make two variations for my Cynthia doll. So for Cynthia, I want to give her a pre-Angelica look and also a post-Angelica look. For her pre-Angelica look, I wanted to give her vintage fashion, you know? Since the show was in the style of the 90s, it was shown in the 90s, I thought that the retro futurism looks of the 60s would work as a doll since they share the fun color combinations. I actually did find an image of a brand new Cynthia doll on Google and it got me more inspired to take the 60s route. She was definitely serving us big hair and her dress had a very Judy Jetson silhouette to it. But of course, since I'm hextra, um, I will be hexaggerating her design. <laughs> so I want to give her the iconic big 60s hair with a flip curl. It's just so cool and it definitely defies gravity. I drew a lot of inspirations from Priscilla Presley, The Runway, and of course, drag queens like Lady Bunny. Her makeup will be very much inspired by Twiggy's mod makeup, and that really just consists of big and defined um, eyelids, and also graphic eyelashes. This overall design is clean, um, it's minimal, fun, but still very over the top. And with that being said, let's get on with the video. For today's canvas, I will be using this My Scene Barbie doll I got from the thrift store. As you can see, she doesn't have her factory face on, so I'm guessing that she was actually intended to be customized, and I definitely freaked out when I saw her. I've been wanting to repaint a My Scene doll for quite some time now, so I guess now's the time. I am so in love with her face mold, and judging by her hair, I think this was a Noelle doll. So let's go ahead and remove her hair so we can make her a wig. For Cynthia's hair, I chose this pastel yellow yarn to really make it pop, but it's also kind of like very 90s. And yes, this was not enough yarn, so I had to make more in the end. To give the 60s bump, I'm using this styro egg and the other various materials to give the big hair fantasy. I have to say that this is the biggest wig I have ever made. Yes, even bigger than the Ursula wig and even bigger than the Trixie wig. It's literally bigger than my fist. So yeah, I actually ran out of those styro balls, so I had to resort to these um, kind of cotton looking um, pom-poms. Um, but it still works. The goal is achieved, you know? The goal is to have a massive volume, you know, the higher the hair, the closer to the ceiling. So, um, yeah. Now 
now we have that fully glued, let's work on the iconic damaged Cynthia hair. So I am making this like how I usually make doll wefts, and I am adding a pin needle in the middle. Unfortunately, I lost the footage for this part, but I just used hairspray to make the weft harder, but I'm sure that gel or even glue would work as well. And we should have something like this. And this one, it's not that hard, I used got to be for it, um, and it's still kind of flexible. You can definitely obviously layer it. Also, you can definitely just reroute the entire head or even directly glue it, but I wanted to make the removable because of her other wig. Before I forget, let's remove her factory hair paint using acetone. Now I will be rebodying her because I prefer the Model Muse body more than the Mycene rubber legs one. Now if you've been here for a while, you know that I love delicate hand poses, and this doll's right hand isn't really that. So I will be reposing her right arm and both of her hands using a heat gun. As you can see, she is now able to do the wave. So now, I'm just gonna go ahead and dip it in cold water to harden the plastic. Now let's heat up her hands, and I will also separate her index finger. And obviously for this to be a little bit easier, they do have to be really really warmed up. Not like melting hot, but warm. And we just repeat all of the steps. And here is a little before and after. As you can see, it's just more delicate. It's just a little bit more renaissance-y. It's like a painting. It's a little delicate, you know? Time to give her a face. As usual, I gave three coats of Mr. Super Clear or Mr. Super Queer so that our pencils, pastels, and paint adheres to the rubber face. Now let's start sketching her face and give her some mod makeup. I want to definitely exaggerate her eyelids and I also want to make it a little bit more rounder. It was definitely refreshing repainting a Mycene Barbie head. Like I said, I've been wanting to do one and it's really really cool because they do have some exaggerated features. Um, a bigger head than Barbie, but overall it's still kind of like scaled down, you know? To make her overall look a little bit more contemporary, I am giving her the rounded pout since it's been quite popular nowadays. Usually, mod makeup would have white to really light pastels for the lids and a graphic line for the crease. I actually played the Rugrats game Search for Reptar in the PlayStation 1, and I loved it when you get to play as Angelica. You know, she was my favorite. But I did hate the part where you have to look for Cynthia in like the sewers um, while controlling Spike. For some reason, Spike was so hard to control, and honestly, that part, that level was just so scary because it was so empty, the music was so eerie, and um, yeah, but it was such a good game. Don't 
When I was a kid, I really wanted to have a Cynthia doll because I actually thought that she was a real doll, like a real brand of doll.、Um, but now, my dreams are coming true. I'm making it come true. <laughs> Now let's give her a sharp eyeliner. I may be exaggerating, but I feel like eyeliner may never go out of style. It was popular then, it's popular now. And of course, it's that graphic, sharp liner, you know? I'm using acrylic paint to make the scleras more opaque. Like I said, for me, Rugrats is very nostalgic. I grew up watching it, I was obsessed with it. For you guys, what is that very, very nostalgic show that you love to watch? Comment down below. And then for the bottom lashes, for the mod makeup, it's usually drawn and exaggerated, so I try to make this more graphic. Of course, I've been blushing her face with some pastels, but we're gonna do some more blushing. You can never go wrong with blushing, I think. Then again, with acrylic paint, I am giving her catch lights to make her eyes twinkle. Now let's give her some 3D lashes. For this one, I'm using individual fake human lashes, and yes, I'm just using Elmer's glue wall. And now it's time to gloss up her lips. And now we have Cynthia's face all finished. And I love how she looks. She definitely has the side eye look. I feel like she's like judging Angelica because, you know, I don't think Angelica's the best doll owner.、Um, but, you know, it's so cute. I love it. I love this look. I also actually want to give her a fresh new set of manicure. And now for her iconic outfit, of course. This was made by the talents of Heather from Deluxe Designs. She was actually able to get the retro look that I was going for and even included the belt. Cynthia originally wore red shoes, so I'm giving her these Model Muse pumps and will be repainting them red. And yes, the red bottoms are present for Miss Cynthia. She deserves it. Now, these stocking shoes are from the proudly pink Silkstone Barbie, and I was actually excited to use it for this custom. Nothing drastic, but I will give it some red bottoms. I wanted to give her a bracelet she had, but I'm repainting it to match her shoe stockings. Now, let's go back to her big wig, and I am gluing a piece of ribbon to look like a headband. Then, I am repainting it to match the pink of her tights a little bit more, because this one's a little bit too baby pink, I think. Now, let's cut her wig and give her the 60s flip. 
We kind of have to give her a blunt cut because most of vintage hair isn't really layered. And so, yeah, to achieve vintage styles, you kind of have to do um, blunt cuts for the hair. I'm using a heated metal chopstick and my silicone fingertip to curl her hair. These silicone fingertips are so, so handy. I love them so much. Um, people were wondering where I got them. I actually got them from a local dollar store, but I think they're also an Amazon. I'm not sure though, but they are very handy. To reinforce the curl, I am also going in with my mini iron. And yes, to lock the entire style in place, I sprayed the entire wig with got to be glue hairspray. And now it's time to dress her up. And now we're done.